Standing Liberty in the spirit of 1776. It's Dan Badandi on TruthRadioShow.com. Dan Badandi, TruthRadioShow.com. Today's July 16th, 2015, and we are minutes away from an interview with the Bob and Chez Show. They call themselves the Bubble Genius Bob and Chez Show from California. Um, basically, I've been trying to get a hold of these people because for two years now since the Boston bombing, they have relentlessly attacked us. Uh, Bob Seska, I p- believe I pronounced his last name right, who, who gives a crap anyway, but um, he's a journalist for Salon and the Daily Banter, and he's wrote and written countless articles about me, Alex Jones, trashing us. Because, oh, damn, but don't you mispronounce the word? Oh, oh, God, like that's a big deal. You know, the, the whole thing is they've been trashing us, uh, saying we're liars about stuff, but never show refutable evidence. But yet, they sit there and have the nerve to make fun of me because I mispronounce words, I misspell words. Who cares? I would rather tell the truth. I would rather listen to somebody stutter and tell the truth versus somebody that is perfectly speaking, could read from a uh, teleprompter, and speaks nothing but lies, i.e. the mainstream media. So, um, you know, I guess Bob and Chez, they had no choice but to bring me on their show because their audience demanded it. Because I called them out for the gutless cowards that they are. And they kept overlooking me, oh, whatever. And I said, you know, bring me on your show. Two years now. And it took their audience to demand it. And they said, all right, I guess we'll let you on. But it's not a debate. And that's what I asked them to go on is a debate. But now, yes, you can go on, but no, it's not a debate. So they think, oh, well, they're going to make an example out of me. Uh, these liberals, um, they're going to make an example out of this right-wing conspiracy theorist. And first of all, I'm not right-wing. I'm an independent constitutionalist. So that's a big burst of net bubble. You know, the bubble genius. And I wonder why they call him the bubble genius. I don't even want to know. <laughs> I really don't. But um, they've been attacking me relentlessly. Me and Alex Jones, and just yesterday or the day before, um, Bob Seska wrote an article on Salon. Alex Jones warns listeners that the UN is a space cult plotting to eradicate humanity by making our children gay. First of all, uh, Alex Jones never said the UN is a space cult. Okay, he says stuff like that out of uh, sarcasm and all that. But, you know, the thing is these people listen to a half-assed story then make their own accusations. And uh, if you read through these guys' articles, um, the Salon, Daily Banter, that show, the Bob and Chez show... Never in their shows, they base their show off of making fun of people. Base their show off of um, targeting somebody's errors. Like if you misspell something, God forbid. But never with the subjects about. Like they uh, bash me for about the Boston bombing. Bash me because I challenged the official narrative of Sandy Hawk. Constantly bash me about that. But, hey, again. You know, they think that winning the argument, they think they're ahead of this game because, oh, ooh, one of Dan, uh, Dan Badani's videos, he mispronounced the prime minister of Israel's last name. Oh, my God, that right there should discredit me, yeah, because I mispronounced somebody's last name. And in the same sentence, they went on to mispronounce my name. Go figure. But that's not what it's about. And these people build up this false reality like they're winning the argument. But the whole time, the whole time, they sit there and target you, the individual, target your misspellings, your mispronunciations of words, but never get to the point of what the subject was about in the first place. And um, I'm going to call them out on the carpet, and uh, you know, I, w- I want to see would they come up for answers, if they do that. They're going to relentlessly attack me, I guarantee that. They're going to try to get me to uh, say somebody's last name or say a word that I uh, messed up on. You know, again, I'm not a perfect speaker. I'll admit that. And I'm going to tell them right out, hey, listen, I'm not a perfect speaker. You want a perfect speaker? Somebody that tells lies? Go listen to the mainstream media. Yeah, I mess up. I mispronounce words. I stutter. Who cares? But at least I tell the truth and I have the guts to do it, unlike you people at um, Bob and Chez Bubble Genius Show. But anyway, we're going to be joining up soon. Um, in a few minutes now, we're going to be uh, on via Skype on their show. And I'm recording on both ends because I know how some shows are. They, they like to mute the microphone or hang up on you to say, oh, look, he hung up. So none of that's flying today because we're recording this live. Okay, this is going live on the show. This is a pre-recording, yes, but we're not editing nothing. We are recording from start to finish. Dan Badandi, Truth Radio Show. Stay tuned, folks.
All right, well, let's dispense with all the happy crappy and get right down to it. Let's welcome into our virtual studio uh, our very special guest this week. A surprise guest, because we only we only figured it out a few days ago. Welcome to the studio, Dan Badon. Dan, how you doing? Yeah, thanks for having me. Okay, can you hear me okay? Yep, yeah, you're fine. Oh, awesome. Awesome. All right, great, great. Uh, in, in case you're just joining us, in case you're listening to the show for the very first time, let you know who Dan is. Dan is a correspondent for Alex Jones's, in, and correct me if I'm wrong on any of this, Dan. Dan is a correspondent for Alex Jones's InfoWars Network. He's also the host of the Truth Radio Show. It's a, it's a, uh, a YouTube podcast, YouTube radio show, and uh, it's carried on a bunch of a different uh, other uh, YouTube channels. We first learned about Dan after, um, let's see. I think the first time I heard about Dan is right after the Boston Marathon bombing when he interrupted the press conference there asking questions about whether the Boston Marathon bombing was a false flag. It was the first time I, I was familiar with Dan. And my, me as well. Yeah. And I think the, uh, the first clip from Dan's show that we played on our show was when Dan was famously told to go F himself by State Senator Josh Miller and his gun-grabbing cameraman. What did you think of that, Dan? When that when that first happened, what happened with with Josh Miller and his cameraman? They really uh, came after you, didn't they? Oh no! The whole story is both sides of the story. They failed miserably on uh, their gun control, the Nazi gun control. I simply asked them a uh, real question: How the hell does gun control take guns out of the hands of criminals? And they had no response. And the typical liberal uh, assault is go f yourself. I mean, like, where's the proof? Where's the stats? When we get all the proof, history, and stats to back us up that more guns equals less crime. Well, what, what I want to do is in a little bit, I want to get into um, sort of your, the, the tactics, your sort of uh, your mo as far as how you get this information, how you approach people, and and basically your thoughts on what it means to be basically a new media journalist you know an alternative journalist so we'll get to that in a little bit but but first right off the bat i want to start off start right out with the uh the common core dildo teacher now you read a story on your show that turned out to be fake and you know it happens to some of us you know we get these stories and they turn out to be not true but this was i mean as far as i'm concerned this was kind of obviously fake like a teacher teaching young children how to use an artificial penis you see you know, you also thought the, the Sandy Hook parents were suing Newtown over LAX security. That was like another thing that you thought. And it was actually lax security. It was, But you thought the LAX airport was somehow involved. You, you, you bought it all immediately. And this is, this is an important question. You bought those things immediately without looking at them critically. And to me, it speaks volumes about sort of your unquestioning belief in, in all of these conspiracy theories, most of them marketed by Alex Jones, who, let's face it, is that, I mean, he's an entertainer, right? He's a, he's a radio guy. I mean, you being formerly a wrestler, I mean, you know the difference between entertainment and actual news in some way, right? Well, so. first of all, it wasn't Alex Jones. I mean, Alex sent me there. We had no clue what happened, what was going on, and nothing. And when we got the official narrative, now I want to explain why I asked these questions at the Boston Marathon. This is why I asked him. I want to go back to, like, like, what was your thought process? Like, when you saw that story... Oh, the story, yeah. I mean, like, I had a new producer come in. They print the articles out for me, and they, uh, you know, sort them out on my desk and everything. And, of course, I'm ranting through the articles, and, yeah, we come across fake ones. I mean, I actually retracted that story afterwards. Yeah, but the thing is, I... Any human being, if that was real, you would have a right to rant about that. I mean, but we did retract the story. Even Infowars took the story down when they found out it was fake. So, you know, it's a mistake. You know what I mean? Plain and simple. But you, but you said, yeah, sure. But, but you said on Twitter that, uh, and this was in our discussion earlier this week on Twitter, where you said you wouldn't be surprised if it actually happened. Oh, no, not at all. I mean, the disgusting crap that's going on in our schools today, I mean, it would not at all surprise me that this would happen. It wouldn't surprise you if a teacher was teaching elementary school kids about dildos. Not at all. I mean, uh, the, the crap they're teaching kids today, it wouldn't even uh, surprise me. I mean, 10 years ago, yeah, absolutely. But the way things are going today, it would not surprise me. Yeah. What crap and who do you blame for that? 
Well, it's uh, the, the media, for one. You know, the mainstream media, I should say. They're the ones destroying the minds of people. The public school system's destroying the children. Teaching them, oh, the guns are bad. The guns kill people. No, it's the guns that save a lot of liberties. Does everything, does everything with you come back to guns? It seems to. No, it's just an example what they're doing to the children here. You know what I mean? And now they're teaching the kids, it's okay to be transgender. I mean, it was an article, I forgot the source of it. A little boy used a little girl's bathroom. There was three girls in there. The girls made a complaint about it, and they're the ones who got threatened with hate crime if they said anything. I mean, where are the morals in this country anymore? Do you, do you think, Dan, that they should be teaching uh, how to use guns in schools? Oh, no, not at all. But, I mean, to teach them, say, hey, gun safety, hey, you know, if you see a weapon, you know, because how many years, hundreds of years, Kids grew up in this country, guns hanging on the fireplace, loaded weapons and everything, didn't even touch it. They knew how to shoot at 12 years old, and there were no problems. It was when they started implementing gun control, that's where all the problems started, and started brainwashing when you have your own uh, Senator Dianne Feinstein. I, I mean, this girl is uh, just a moron, okay? She says uh, when a gunman realizes that nobody else is armed, he will lay down his weapons and turn himself in, and that's just the human nature. And I don't know what planet she's living on, like Fantasy Island or something, and you have Eric Holder openly saying we need to brainwash people that's into true. thinking guns are bad. This is all on record. He said this back in 95. We can play the video for that. And, and what we need to do is change the way in which people think about guns, especially young people. One thing that I think is clear with young people and with adults as well is that we just have to be repetitive about this. It's not enough to simply have a, a catchy ad on a Monday and then only do it every Monday. We need to do this every day of the week and just really brainwash people into thinking about guns in a vastly different way. You know, they, they are brainwashing America to say, hey, you know, we need to turn our guns in, we need to uh, censor our First Amendment because when we don't have a right to say that being gay is wrong. You know, I, think, I think we're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit, Dan. I, just, I, I want to go back to your point of view when it comes to conspiracy theories in general, which is, which is why I kind of led off with the common, common core dildo teacher, because it seemed like you bought into it right away. And, and it seems to me as if the, the whole idea behind conspiracy theories is questioning authority. That's always, that's sort of, it, wouldn't you agree that that's sort of the broad stroke concept behind? Well, why not? What's wrong with questioning the official narrative? I mean, uh, when you're, you're into journalism, what, what, everybody that wants to become a reporter, right? They become a reporter for what? To seek the truth. I mean, I talk to tons of mainstream media uh, reporters, former ones like Ben Swan, uh, Amber Lyon, and all these people. They are sick of being censored by the mainstream media. So, I well, mean, let me ask you this then. Are, are, so are you forming your own theories? Or are you basically, because on your show, I mean, what I see a lot of is you just reading InfoWars conspiracy theories. No, they're not InfoWars conspiracy theories. I um, mean, people don't understand, okay? When we hear stories, we go investigate it, and we write our own stories. Alex trusts us with our own stories. He doesn't sit there. He doesn't know 60% of what goes on over InfoWars. People blame Alex, blame Alex. I was in Boston, okay? I seen what happened. I seen all the stuff going down. I'm the one that came out with those questions. Alex didn't call me and say, hey, Dan Bedani, I want you to ask these questions. No, I'm the one to form my own questions. So Alex, why, was that the, why was that the first place that you went? Why was that the first place your mind went that this explosion that you know that hurt and killed these people had to be some sort of false flag and well for one for one on record local 15 news reports where they were interviewing coaches and police on the finish line they all thought it was some kind of a drill because they said oh we heard a loud announcement saying everybody stay calm this is just a drill then boom boom there goes the explosions at the start line this morning they had um, bomb spotters on the roof of the building, and they had bomb-sniffing dogs coming up and down at the start line. And Melanie said there was bomb-sniffing dogs at the finish line. But they kept making announcements saying to the participants, do not worry, this is just a training exercise. Well, evidently, I don't believe they were just having a training exercise. I think they must have known. They must have had some kind of threats or suspicions called in. Now, Coach Stevenson told me he's run plenty of marathons in DC.
was on record. Not, no, no, they were, they were, they were, they were detonating other devices after the initial. In the same bomb. two locations. I mean, come on. Then you had uh, uh, Boston Globe tweeted out early that morning that they were doing controlled demolition. Okay, controlled That's explosives. No, that would no, it hasn't been debunked. I contacted the woman from the Boston Globe, and she confirmed that. She tried to deny it first, but she confirmed that we went up, and 3,000 people retweeted that off the Boston Globe's Twitter. And that was with those two right there. And so, and so because of so, so first of all, that has been debunked. But secondly, how is it debunked when they admitted it? It's on. You just don't. Please uh, don't. How is um, it? Be, uh, you know, answer the. How is it debunked? Decided, debunk you it. decided because of a couple of, of coincidences or a couple of coincidences that happened during a very high stress situation when there was a lot of chaos. You've come to the conclusion that the United States government killed its own people. How do you get from point A to point B on that? See, this is the issue that I have, and this is the problem that I have, and this is why, for all the fun that we make of you, and all the time thing that we joke about it, and I, you know what? Seriously, it's all in good fun, man. This is no bullshit. We're not, you know, we're not out to get you. We're just, we're just having fun. We're poking fun. But for all of that, the real issue that I do have with you is that you're doing harm by believing this crap. That's what bothers. Well, me. if you I heard that stuff too, wouldn't you challenge it? Where I, all right, fine. Listen, seriously. I want to. I'll tell you what. I'll, tell, I'll let you talk in just a second. I promise. I mean it. Um, I want to know where you get from. There are a couple of coincidences, a couple of things that don't seem to add up to this unbelievable conspiracy that you figure out. I mean, here's look. Here's how it works when it comes to proving things. You, if you make an outlandish claim, you have to be able to prove it. Not just say, well, you know what, isn't this strange? Yeah, maybe it is strange. But you have to be able to prove it. And if you can't actually prove it, I get to look at you and say, uh, no, man, that's bullshit. And just honestly, just dismiss it as easily as you say. They kept making announcements saying to the participants, do not worry, this is just a training exercise. Well, it's not bullshit, it's fact. I mean, the, the Twitter did go up regardless what people not. think they debunked it. That Twitter, it did exist on the Boston Globe's uh, Twitter. That is on record. No, 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 no. What you're referring to right there is a simple error in time zone. There, the, Boston what? Boston is in one time zone. Austin and other places in the United States. I was States. in Rhode Island when that happened. I'm in the same time zone. I'm 45 minutes away from Boston. Yeah, but the, but the, when it was initially reported, and it wasn't initially reported on your Twitter timeline exclusively, it was reported elsewhere. The timing that the, the Boston uh, <laughs> the uh, Boston Globe released that tweet is different in different places in different time zones. You understand? So what made I understand that, but it went out in the morning. What, it hit what, Eastern what, what, time what, early in the morning. What 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 the difference is is that. It's earlier in the day, the farther west you go. You understand? I so understand that, Pop. It may have been read in Chicago, or it may have been read in Austin, Texas, or Los Angeles. comes down into that person's Twitter on their time, not Boston time, on their Well, time. I'm in Boston time, okay? And it came out early in the morning, well hours before the bombs went off. And what a coincidence that the police confirm... The Boston police even confirmed that there was bomb drills, okay? And it happened coincidentally in the same two locations where those other two bombs went off. So, so, so let me ask you this then. How does there being a bomb drill, and let's face it, we live in a post-9-11 world where there are cautions and precautions taken before a big event like the Boston Marathon or the Super Bowl. Why is it so outlandish? And I'm not saying there was, because I think you're making a mistake based on time zones. But let's say that there actually were uh, uh, drills run before the finish of the Boston Marathon. How does that eventually evolve into false flag attacks staged by the government in order to get your guns? I don't understand. Which, by the way, hasn't happened since our guns are. Uh, excuse me. Um, why is people in New York can't own? You know, honest citizens can't own firearms in New York and Chicago you, because of gun control. The fake thing that's happened to you? Seriously, that's that's the. That's it. That's it for you. The fact that No, not at all. I mean, I could go on all night and day about gun facts. That's, that's the government moving in to take everything away, take all your rights? You know, after, yeah, absolutely. The one, the one, 27 square miles. Let's, you know, let's add it up. Let's say about 40 square miles in the entire country. And they shut Watertown down illegally. That's right, illegally, busting into people's homes, kicking them out, kicking them out for hours. I was there, okay? I interviewed all the people. They were terrified by the police, not because of terrorists, okay? They were terrified by the police.
Yes, so because what? you know why? You know why? They, you know why they were going into people's houses like that? And I'm sure they. Oh, did it's it for our safety. Them. Yeah. Illegally, but you know what? Sometimes when there are a couple of terrorists on the loose. You know, they, they, they search through neighborhoods. They do that, especially when the terrorists are, you know, <laughs> in those neighborhoods. That just happens. I mean, where do they where do they find Jokar Jarnia? They found him in a boat behind someone's house. Oh, yeah, and he, uh, he writ his confession letter in blood, which is hard to believe. And, you know, what happened to the Fourth That's Amendment? Think, what? Think, That's what? Right. This thing in any Hold on, what, hap what happened to the Fourth Amendment? You know, busting into people's homes without a warrant? Well, you don't know that there was that was happening. I was there. <laughs> My camera guy's right here. We were there in Watertown. Luke you Rudowski there, from We Are Change the were there. As they, you were there with the police as they entered houses after the bomb. Yeah, they had the whole area blocked off. I mean, like, it, it, so the neighbors the themselves, the neighbors no, who got their no, doors no. pushed in, even confirmed this. Watch our interview on Infowars. We interviewed the neighbors of the, the area where was, the shootout took place and the bomb, you know, so-called bomb that went off. I mean, it was ridiculous. Did they ask to search your house? Um, they told me they were going to search the house. So they didn't ask you, they just told you? They told me they weren't coming in to search. And uh, did they command you to leave your home? They told us we had to leave, yes. One thing I was very, very upset about is that when we were leaving here, all my the lights were on in the house, TVs, you know, and um, back door, they had gone the back door down my basement, and they told me, I said, let me just close all my doors and lock up, and they said, no, they would do it. I came home. Back door was open. This is hours now later. Back door was open. Front door was open. Basement door was open. Lights were on. TVs were on. No one did anything. So they basically left your house unsecured with the doors wide open where nobody was home? Yes, they did. So did they knock at your door just walk in? They knocked the door. But you know what I mean? The door, they almost, they, they almost pushed the door through them. Okay, and uh, did they ask you to search your home at all? Or they just did it? They just did it. You know, they just came in and uh, they're going through. And uh, did they command you to leave your home? Yes. So do you, do you think Jokar Zharnayev's larynx was chopped out by Israeli doctors? No. It was the it was the it was the pot bomb Sorry. that he left there at the uh, at the. Um, uh, at the Boston Marathon bombing that brought down Building 7. So, first of all, the first suspects, okay, by the FBI, okay, the first press conference, I was at every one of the press conferences, their yeah, sir, first suspect, right, he was a white guy, okay, they were going to go after the Patriot groups, okay, they were going to demonize them as terrorists, which is in on record, okay? The Mayak Report, Homeland Security's endgame, they classify returning veterans as terrorists, worse than Al-Qaeda, this is, they're from their own documents. Anybody listening right now, you could Google this stuff for yourself and research you it. That you do realize there are Homeland Security documents based on right-wing extremists and also left-wing extremists, because there are both. There just happens to be many, 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 many more right-wing extremists, because they believe in things like... Oh, yeah, because our gun owners are bad people, constitutionalists are bad people, no, no, no. returning that's veterans... That's you know, we, we, there hasn't been a new gun law passed at the federal level in years. And in fact, they were repealed. They, because they, they can't. They're, they're failing, failing miserably. Maine just became a sixth state this year to pass constitutional carry. Yeah, how much money the NRA spends on individual campaigns in a single year. Thank God. I mean, the yeah. NRA is the most powerful lobbyist group in... I'm not talking about the NRA. I'm not right wing, okay? I'm an independent but, constitutionalist. Look, this, look, this, just, this just shows... How, the, the power of the gun lobby to manipulate members of Congress and at the state level to not pass a damn thing as far as gun control. So all of this uh, this unhinged screeching about gun grabbing is 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 ridiculous because it's just not happening. I wish it would because I do think that to a certain degree there needs to be sensible regulations. Do you, can you recite the entire Second Amendment for me? Yeah, a right to form a well-regulated militia. And to uh, the right to bear arms shall not be infringed. Pla exactly. Plain and simple, well, you period. Know, you know, it's where where's, we shall not be infringed that these people don't understand. And you're saying, oh, we're not taking any guns. Well, guess what? People in Chicago will tell you different. People in Detroit and New York will tell you different. People in your state, California, will tell you different. Dan, first of all, I'm the only one in California. Secondly, I got to tell you seriously for just a second, hearing you, hearing you yell shall not be infringed is like hearing the stones do satisfaction. Thank you. <laughs> On that note, we're gonna Dan, we're gonna take a break. We're gonna take a brief commercial break and we're gonna come back and, and continue to talk about the Second Amendment right after this. The Bubble Genius Bob and Chen Show. Yes, welcome back to it. It is our Thursday show. Thank you so much for joining us today. 
Okay, we're back uh, with Dan Bedondi from InfoWars and the TruthRadioShow.com. Uh, we're being educated. We're being yes, educated. Okay. That's how I like to look at it. So let me ask you, you just, you read for us uh, before the break, you read for us the, the text of the Second Amendment, and I wanted to ask you, do you see the words, or the hyphenated words, well-regulated in there? Absolutely, and it's not okay, the National well, Guard because it was uh, this was created 150 years before the National Guard existed. Yes, but you understand. Yeah, but it's also issues. created. It was like oh no, well regulated. In other words, you don't just have random people going doing random things. Absolutely not. You have a militia corps that's all under regulation. In other words, everybody's into you know what I mean one system, so to speak, that they're being directed. You know, yeah, you can't just yeah. have random people jump in and go just go go do random things. But the thing is, that's just in case we have a tyrannical government. That's what the Second Amendment was created for. Not against uh, uh, thieves only. Not all, you know, not for duck hunting. It was created against a tyrannical government, mainly ours, and to protect ourselves from criminals and our own government. That's what yeah. it was created for. Yeah, that's been a real that's been a real problem over the past 150 years. Oh, well, it has because <laughs> if people didn't touch the Second down. Amendment, we wouldn't be in this uh, mess today. Yeah, they have guns where they should have. Exactly. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Somebody else is there. Someone else is there. Who, who are we No, it's one about? of my producer, Kevin LaProd. Oh, hi, Kevin. Thanks. Thanks for joining us. We're we're, we're interviewing Dan. We didn't know we'd be interviewing chance. you. No. Okay. But well, I want to get back to Boston for one second. I, I just want to clarify something. We're not talking about Boston. I don't want to talk about Boston right now. I'm Why about no? I just wanted to uh, end the Boston <laughs> subject here. No, this is the the whole thing with Boston. Okay. Dan, you would ask the same questions if you knew that. And the thing is, if I was wrong, okay, why no. didn't they not answer my questions? If they answered my questions, I would have dropped it at that. I would have said, okay, all right, whatever. But they did not answer my questions. They, you know, a, a, ignorance shows guilt, plain and simple. Because, and, Dan, you're a screaming boob. You're <laughs> so, yelling at people. You're going up and, and shouting. I'm people. yelling at tyrants. That's who of I'm course yelling at. you're not going to get a real fucking answer out of No, the first, the first question I asked very calmly, you could hear that right on the audio. I did not yell and scream. I asked the question. I got ignored, plain and simple. Well, I remember you yelled distinctively at Josh Miller and his gun-grabbing cameraman. I know, I know that for sure because we have the audio of that. Actually, guys, uh, that was me that made that ha that happen. Yeah, it was my cameraman oh, that did that. Hey, hey, Kevin, were you the guy who was flagrantly hitting on that reporter at, at the beach the other day? No, like, actually, on, it wasn't. Right? No. No. Okay. no. All right. But That's anyway, back to that Josh Miller thing, thing, guys. What I said was the majority is outside. That's what I said to the state senator. The majority is outside. Yeah, because the, the media didn't Bush tell the people. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The media didn't tell the people they had over a thousand people outside for the yeah. guns versus forty people that were against the guns. Dan, okay. I I need to ask you this, that, and and also, you know what, Kevin's free to respond to as far as the majority being outside. Do you know? Do you, have you seen recent polls? regarding uh, uh, gun control and people wanting sensible gun control laws like like extensive like additional background checks at you know at internet sales and gun shows you seen those numbers NRA members by a supermajority margin support those things uh, Republicans by supermajority margins you know support those things the reason they're not passed is not because you're yelling at Josh Miller and his gun grabbing cameraman they're not passed because the NRA owns Congress that is it. That goes back to what I was saying before. Um, excuse me, but all seven of those gun control bills here in Rhode Island failed because of us. So what we did, we had 1,100 people outside testifying. Uh, we shot those bills down. Uh, they, you know what? The gun control bills failed because the NRA owns the legislatures. They it doesn't matter. Gun control does not work. It's historically and statistically proven gun control does not work. How the hell do you know? Oh, all right, all right, all right. Let's play devil's advocate, okay? Let's take Chicago. They pride themselves on the strongest gun control in the country. Fourth of July, anybody that has a mind of their own, go to the computers right now. 83 shootings, all by criminals in Chicago. New York, all the shootings are by who? Criminals. All these mass shootings are done by criminals with illegal guns, okay? Most of them. And all gun-free zones, all of them. You never see that crap happen when a place is armed. Never. I mean, that's all statistically proven. Mm. FBI, yeah, FBI stats. Look, go to FBI.gov. All right, let's go to uh, FBI.gov, okay? It shows that states with no gun control have the lowest crime and murder rates in the country. 
So you want to compare stats? Let's go for it. Some of those things are multi-causal. Like there are different factors that weigh in to to, to where there is crime and where there is not crime. And it's not just about the guns. That's like, you know. Oh, it is about, it's all about because they want to disarm America just like Hitler did. They want to disarm America so they could take our civil liberties. That's exactly where they're going. The wait, U- now, see, now, see, see, there, there it is. The United Nations there openly declares wait, they want total please, gun ban in America. Please stop. There it is. There it is. You have this absolutely outlandish belief. Oh, it's outlandish when you have Eric Holder guns, saying we want to brainwash people the, to thinking guns are bad. Jade, Jade Helm. Do you think Jade Helm's a real thing? Do you think they're going to take over Texas? I'm, I'm asking. I don't think they're going to take over Texas. I think what they're doing is a proxy thing here. They're just testing things out like a beta test because they want to condition the American public to get used to military on the street. Like Boston and uh, Watertown there, they want to condition the people that a police state is okay. And then, no, it's not all right for the military to police our state. It's called posse comitatus. People need to understand that. Do you ever get tired of this? Do you ever, like, Absolutely think, uh, not. I, wish I could wake up one morning and have a normal life. Absolutely, I do. I, I would love to. I would love to be wrong about all this. I would. I would. But you are. No, I'm not wrong. I got stats that's and everything true. to prove it. You, you debunk it. No, that's, that's all right, true. but if I'm wrong, tell me. Show me how I'm wrong. Prove your quote your sources, quote your facts. No, no see, like I said, I don't have to. The, the, the beauty of it is that you're the one making the claim. That which is, and I backed up my claim. I got the stats. And disprove him, man. Chad. Exactly. Disprove the guy. Show me something. Hey, 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 listen. I'm gonna have to let me let me me jump in here, everybody. Because we're using Skype, we need to have one person talking at a time. And Chez gets the priority. So if Chez is talking, I don't want Dan talking, and I don't want Kevin talking. Because you know what happens? Then I can't hear any of you. And that goes out on the show. So one at a time, please. And again, Chez is one of the hosts of the show, so he gets priority here. Okay? So let's, let's then proceed. The issue is that I don't have to prove anything. That's the beauty of it. I so you make false accusations, here. and you don't have to prove nothing? Well, what did I get well let, me, let, me, um, let me explain something to you, Okay. You base your show, okay? You should be ashamed of yourself. God forbid I mispronounce a word or somebody's last name or I misspell something. God forbid. Uh, people would rather hear the truth from somebody that stumbles versus somebody that could talk perfectly and tell nothing but lies, like the mainstream media. Let him go. Okay. Keep talking, dude, please. What else? Yeah. Yeah, what else, man? It educate us. No, I'm not sitting here trying to uh, do anything. I'm just trying to p- tell people the truth, that's all. But you guys base your show on making the- fun of people. Because God forbid I misspelled somebody's last name wrong. You know, who cares? Who cares? People want the truth out there. And you audiences out there listening to Bob and Chad's show, I don't want you to listen to me. I don't. I want you, everything I said, go on Google, go research the stuff for yourself. I mean, it's all on record, all of it. Okay. Okay, thanks. All right, so let's. I want to go back to guns for a second. Um, do you think that there should be? Do you think just like anyone should own as many guns as they want? Absolutely. Any variety, any variety of firearm. Let me finish my question, Dan. Do you think they should be allowed to own uh, as many guns as they can afford and whatever firearm they can get their hands on? Do you believe that that should be legal? Well, the founding father said, Judge Washington, uh, the public should be armed to the teeth just as much as the military. So you're you're. Oh, yeah, you did. What research I quote? Yeah, some, somebody tells me that that's all, that quote is probably also attributed to like three. No, uh, there's hun- uh, That's not just one. Okay, there's hundreds upon hundreds of quotes about how important the public is having firearms. So, so you think you think the public should be able to own like RPGs and rocket launchers and you know whatever they want, just heavy artillery in their backyards? Well, if the military owns it, well, we should. Oh, really? Why not? What, yeah, what, so what, what gives the military right to do it? You know, what, what protects us, the citizens? Our founding fathers stated countless number of times in uh, so many documents, okay, they stated how important it is for the civilians to be well armed and shall not realize, be infringed, period. Dan, 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 do you, you do realize, of course, that the founding fathers Here we couldn't, go. Un, under any circumstances, possess the imagination to... Uh, to conjure up the kinds of weaponry that we have now, they could. Back then, it took you what a minute, two minutes to reload after you fired one shot. They had, they had no. 
no inkling of what was um they had reloadable guns and such i mean they had all kinds of well you know what you're right yeah long rifles i stand i stand corrected it's exactly the same it doesn't matter it's the same scale as today and yeah sure we got more advanced weapons but it doesn't change nothing okay Right. And it shall not be infringed, period. So, please say it again, please, man. I love that. Shall idea. not be infringed, the Second Amendment. Do you guys know what that means? Shall not be infringed? <laughs> no, please, please, please tell no, us. No, no, we want to hear you. We want to hear you. Yeah, we want to hear you guys. Please explain to your audience what shall not be infringed means. Period, plain and simple, no room for interpretation. Shall not be infringed, period. That's it. <laughs> and you sit there and laugh. Oh, oh, oh yeah, the... Like? The guns are bad. Oh, yeah. The guns are bad. The guns are killing people. How about once you tell your audience how knives kill more people? Yeah. Drunk drivers kill more people. Yeah. Let's ban the car. Let's ban all the knives now, okay? Let's right. ban the hammer that kills more people, yeah, than guns, though. You, you understand uh, the difference between a car and a gun? A car has a stated uh, intrinsic purpose that is, a, is apart from... And so does in the Second Amendment. Preacher? The Second Amendment has a well purpose as well. Okay. All right. To protect Sorry, us from here. a tyrannical government and criminals. That's exactly what well, it was look, for. I was going to avoid this, but I kind of have to bring it up. I don't really have much of a choice because for me, this is the thing that separates you from being some guy who comes on, on the radio or whatever and rants about UFOs, which is fine. You know, you can fucking you can talk about the Illuminati. You can talk about UFOs. You can talk about, you know, uh, biblical prophecy, whatever the hell you want. That doesn't that doesn't affect me. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Um, the Bible's hate speech. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. No, the Bible's not hate speech. It's just to me, it doesn't matter because I don't believe in it. And that's my choice. And that's OK. Yeah, liberty. Uh, you know, just like you're allowed to believe in it. Cool. We both good on that. Yeah. Is well, what it, is it? Yeah, liberty. Oh, liberty. 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 There you go. It's yeah. called okay, the First so Amendment, gentlemen. <laughs> all right. So here's the thing, though. Here's where you go from being just, you know, a guy shouting at clouds to somebody who really is a problem. Um, answer a question for me. Do you believe that the Sandy Hook massacre happened? Um, I, I hope to God I'm wrong, and I pray I'm wrong. And But then, then again, I don't want the deaths of children either. But just to say, devil's advocate here, it really happened like they said it did. Now, again, it goes back to the guns, okay? If there was armed God at that school, those kids would be alive today. But personally, all the evidence that I have seen, okay, and we've been to all the foyer hearings with Wolfgang Halbeck, these people lie out their asses, okay? I don't believe it happened. I don't. And if somebody could prove me wrong, I would gladly, humbly... Okay, apologize. They Again, they don't have to prove you because you're the one making the crazy claims. Oh, crazy claims, yeah. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of crazy claims. Why was Lifestyle not called? You understand, though, if you bring it up, you're going to have to back up what you say, and you can't. Oh, here's I can, a, I can. A for you about, here's a question about arming the teachers and the principal and all that stuff and how that may have prevented Sandy Hook, Dan. Do you, do you read the news today? Did you see what happened in Tennessee? Yeah, absolutely. Guys, guys, four guys were killed at a military base. Marines. A uh, gun-free they, zone. Gun-free zone. Uh, that they weren't armed to the teeth? No, they weren't armed. But, oh, they weren't. Gun-free no, zones. No, they actually weren't because they were at a recruiting center. Again, gun-free zones. All these mass shootings take place in gun-free zones. Like the Navy Yard shooting. Yeah, another gun-free zone. Uh, we have a Navy base out here in Newport, Rhode Island. They are armed to the teeth. They have a sidearm and a long rifle with them. You There's will never question. see a mass uh, person, a person go there and stage a mass another, shooting there. Another, another question for you, Dan. I don't know if you remember 1981, but in 1981, Ronald Reagan was, was shot. So was uh, Press Secretary James Brady. Yep, I remember that. was also shot. They, you know, they were... <laughs> J J Hinckley was surrounded by Secret Service agents who all were carrying Uzi submachine guns, and yet John Hinckley Jr. was still able, able to get off enough rounds to shoot the president in the chest. Tell me again how good guys with guns stop bad guys with guns. Easy. All the stats prove it. Photographs of Secret Service agents, let me finish, carrying Uzi submachine guns. Not, not typical handguns. Uzi automatic submachine guns. Answer this one, guys. How did the good guys... No, at least there's a question. Okay. Hey, Kevin, 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 we only have a half an hour to go, so I want to I want to keep... No, I'll answer your question. Dan was invited on the show, and I want to talk to Dan. No so problem. I want Dan's response to that. 
good guys with guns don't always stop bad guys with guns. Well, they and do, I because they stopped him from killing... He could have killed other people. They stopped him. Yeah, sure, he got a shot or two off. No big deal. But they actually stop, they stopped him. Oh, now, wait, wait. All right, now let's just say they took all the guns away, right? He could have shot the president and everybody else in the crowd. Easily. You just said no big deal in reference to the assassination attempt on President Reagan. Not in that aspect, not in that context, okay? In other words, it's no big deal because they had armed guards. They could have shot other people, okay? Other people would have been shot if there was no armed guards there. Yeah, and especially if they had, like, a, an extended it, clip. It if minimized the damage. Clips back then, you know, he would have shot a bunch of people. I think we should have more extended clips, don't you? Oh, well, yeah, I have extended clips on my guns. Why? Because I feel safe with them. It's my Second Amendment to do so. Shall not be infringed. There it is. That's all that matters. Yeah, but the whole thing is, uh, here's my thing, okay? Yeah, here we go. I mean, like I said all the time, if you could debunk me, you have not, okay, provided no evidence to debunk my questions about Sandy well, Hook, about the Boston not, Marathon, no or anything else. I mean, I have. So, again, yeah. again, I don't have to debunk you. We don't have to debunk you. You are the one who is required to put forth evidence. And so far, all you have are a couple of coincidences. And Co coincidences is all on record. Quite frankly, for shit. Yeah. Dude, you don't have any actual proof. Oh, if I do have proof. I do have proof. We provide the proof. Awesome um, I, I don't know if you guys actually watch our reports. I don't know if you actually watch our reports. But anybody listening out there, when we have a report, we write an article. There's tons of leaks of the sources of our proof. We put the articles on the screen where you could go yourself to research the stuff. Okay, we're just reporting what we learn. That's it. You know what I mean? Should read, Dan, I think you should spend some time with a couple of books. I think you should read the book, All the Oh, Presidents I read Men. books all the time. I think you should go back and read the book, All the President's Men, about the reporting on Watergate by Woodward and Bernstein. And What's that got to do with gun control? What's that? Operate. Ronald they, Reagan they, was they, for they, gun they, control, they, too. Dan, no one can hear you when I'm talking because of the way Skype works. And all they hear is, eh, uh, uh, eh, uh. okay? So let me finish. Read that book and find out. Maybe crack a good, uh, like, journalism 101 textbook. Find out what it takes to put together a real news story. Not just blurting any theory that you find. It means putting the story together and constantly, constantly second-guessing every bit of information you have. Figuring out the who, what, when, where, and why is step one. Step two is just thinking critically about your own work. Okay? The Go <laughs> learn that. Because then, you know what, you certainly have the tenacity. You go and learn that, and maybe you'll get somewhere. Maybe people will start to take you seriously outside of the InfoWars universe, okay? Um, in addition to that, in addition to that, I want to go back to the gun question, then I want to move on to abortion, okay? Uh, do you think that the mentally ill should be allowed to carry firearms, as many as they want? If they don't pose a threat, and, if they don't pose a threat to society, why not? Well, if they do, let's say they do. Let's say they've had uh, psychotic breaks and there have been issues. Well, then, have... then you got to uh, start nailing them down because you have these doctors who work for federal government to say, well, oh, anybody's psychotic. Good. They're doing this to the veterans. You could. This is all on record. Look, 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 look. I just, just stick to the guns. Do you think they I am sticking to the guns. Like, they're doing this to wreck the veterans to say they're not mentally capable of having weapons when they're fine. Okay, I got friends who are like this. Let's just say there is a guy who was convicted of, uh, of, of making a woman's suit out of, uh, out of uh, human skin, like in <laughs> Silence of the Lambs. And he goes to prison for 20 years, gets out of prison. Should that guy be allowed to own as many firearms as he wants? No, I always say law-abiding citizens. All right, law-abiding citizens. So you're into regulation. That's a regulation, Dan. That's a regulation. And that flies directly in the face of shall not be infringed. Do no, it doesn't. Blanket statement doesn't. No, it doesn't. Lie? No, it doesn't. Because you're, it it's infringing. It does. It absolutely does. No, you because he stated that. Can't own a gun. That was stated because they, they shall not be infringed on upon our rights. Can't own a gun. That was you stated. That. No, that was stated. Shall not be infringed means your rights shall not be infringed. But if you commit a crime, you pay your dues to society. What? And back the way it was back then, when you paid your dues to society, you were granted your full rights back. And I believe so that's the way it should be. 1.21 gigawatt DeLorean and go back to 1776 where things were simpler and there weren't mental patients and psychotic breaks and well that's because of the vaccines I mean the vaccines and all these GMOs and uh, everything here we go. Uh, here we go. Like, there we're gonna, there you take, go. gonna take one last break and we're gonna come back and awesome. I got some uh, some questions for you about abortion we'll come back with more show right after this
eBay. Really appreciate that. Yeah. Sales. Where you could have, where you could have bought, uh, bought like a giant thing of uh, spit. <laughs> Since that's what they were selling during that, it was basically crap. Discount spit. That's right. Thank you. All right. Yeah. It's all, it's all shit that you would never need in a million years. <laughs> and uh, just real quick, Dan, before we get back into the issues, um, I remember in your show you said that uh, the, the the title "Bubble Genius" in the name of our show makes us sound a little gay. Is that what you were kind of saying about that? Yeah, actually, it was. Yeah, you understand that that's the name of our sponsor, right? Oh, I don't care. It's not my sponsor. I don't care. I'm not politically make, correct, so if you're looking for a PC person, I'm far from politically correct, so I could give yeah, a rat's well, ass. I know, because, I mean, because gay people are weird and all. No, right? I never said that. I got friends who are gay, okay? I love them just as fine. much as my you, straight you friends. Remember, you, you said you, you used that, you used that, uh, you implied that in a negative way, though. Actually, hang on. I got to ask, ask one quick question. Do you think we're politically correct? Damn. Oh, yeah, you guys go along with anything the media tells you. I mean, what's wrong? Let me ask you two a question. What is wrong with asking questions? There's nothing wrong. There's well, nothing I asked questions, how come they weren't answered? If I was wrong, like in Sandy Hook 2 or Wolfgang, if we were wrong, okay, why couldn't those an uh, questions be answered? Why? Because there's a decorum to journalism. Oh, what decorum. You you when you're in the foyer here in the Senate here, and when you ask a question, and the answers can't be provided. Yeah. You're following, you're following officials from Newtown up and down the street and shouting questions at them. Do you think that they should answer you? Absolutely. You, honestly, are you deluded enough to believe? That's their that job. They're public officials. Answer you as you stop. They're them public they officials. Dan, Dan, they're public Dan, officials. Dan, just stop for a second, please. Well, what's wrong with asking questions? Your, your, no, the, here's the thing, just okay? If, if they would have answered my questions, I would have stopped. If they would have answered Wolfgang's questions, he would have stopped. Yeah, well, if you're, they, you're arguing, you're making the argument. No, I'm not making an argument. They, why ain't these questions there? answered? No, listen to me. You are coming from the. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a what, deranged what lunatic. I got the tinfoil hat on. Um, I got the deranged uh, lunatic uh, tinfoil hat on. Yep. And I, well, hon, I want to tell everybody out there listening. I want to tell everybody out there listening. Okay. Do not listen to myself or Baba Chez. Do your own research. I'm telling everybody listening right now. Do your own research. Don't listen to Dan Bedard. Don't listen to Baba Chez. Do your own research, and you will find the truth. You're right about Oh, that. yeah, and no, I want to thank you two guys. So I got to thank you two guys. I want to go on record here. I want to thank you, Bob and Chez. I really do because the last two years you've been slandering me. You guys actually brought, um, I say, about a 1,000 people over to my show. All of them said, hey, will you listen to you? Uh, Bob and Chez trash you. We looked you up to see who you were, and we said, oh, this guy's telling the truth. He's uh, from the heart and everything else, and thank you for bringing some fans over to the Truth Radio I'm show. Really, I'm really glad. I'm sure I have no doubt that we have a lot of cross, uh, a lot oh, of yeah. cross audience. Yeah, lots, lots of the same people. Yeah, by the way, us, us, honest, honestly, us Rhode Islanders got to stick together, right? Yeah, yeah, my family's from Providence. You know what else, um, Dan? You understand that some people will listen to our show because they don't like us. You understand how that works? Oh, I right? know, and the same with my show, too. Sometimes, sometimes people go over and they they read uh, one of my articles or one of Ches's articles at the Daily Banter, and they go, "Oh, I don't like these guys." And then they maybe. Oh, I know how it all works. Like, right? like what you have to say, you understand how that works. I understand that. You know, I, mean, yeah. I got people on my show that don't like me. They listen to just to see, like you guys, listen to my show to see what I'm going to say wrong. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to ask. And by the way, just stop for a second. By the way, I appreciate we appreciate you coming on. I mean that. Yeah. Um, what I want to get pleasure. back to because this is very this is really important to me. This is the one thing that's really important to me is that you're following people from Sandy Hook, from people people from Newtown, Connecticut, around, and the basic argument that you're making and asking these questions is, like you said, you believe that their children either didn't exist at all or weren't actually killed. Right. And that makes you a fucking monster. Oh, it does, huh? Eyes. How about you liberals exploiting the debts of these poor kids if it really occurred for gun control? How about that, huh? Right after Sandy I'm Hook, Michael Bloomberg, Michael Bloomberg funded Mother's Demand Action, all these groups all over New England to push gun control, but he failed miserably here in Rhode Island because we don't tolerate that crap, okay? And even if those kids died, if those kids really died, I will go I will go apologize to every one of those parents, and I will humbly admit I was wrong. But all the evidence is stacking up. There was no bodies seen. Uh, Columbine, all the media seen the bodies being carried out. How come eight minutes from the first shot they had official body count, huh? Answer that one. How come all the media and the cameras and helicopters didn't see no bodies pulled out of the school? How come Lifestyle wasn't dispatched? 
Oh, it is proof. It's on record. We were at the foyer meeting. You're asking questions, but guess what? Questions don't equal proof. It does. We have the new town chairman. She admitted. That means nothing. It doesn't mean shit. Oh, it means you got something that. Oh, we got tons of proof about that too. We All got right, proof okay. of that. Mike, you know what, Larry Silverstein, you own the complex. He admitted on record. I have a friend who was a New York firefighter there. They said they pulled building seven. They blew building seven up. Larry Silverstein on television, on worldwide TV, no, admitted no, to it. Man, yes, man, he please did. Stop. Please stop. Please stop. And I, I'll, stop. I mean, I could keep pounding you guys with facts left and right. So let's when, go on to Silver, abortion then. Let's go. When Silverstein said pull it, he was talking about the fire crew. He wasn't talking oh, about yeah, the Oh, yeah, because it's a demolition term. Pull it. You re uh, research that. He was talking about the crew. Oh, no, I'm sure he was talking about his uh, penis toe. Let's pull it. Yeah. Uh, you, you need to do the research, okay? You need to do watch the facts, okay? I remember getting a call from the uh, fire department commander telling me that they were not sure they were going to be able to contain the fire. And I said, you know, we've had such terrible loss of life. Maybe the smartest thing to do is, is pull it. Uh, and they made that decision to pull, and then we watched the building collapse. The New York firefighters, they're, they're the ones who started the 9 11 Truth Commission. The New York Fire Department, not conspiracy theorists. I have a friend, Phil, who was one of the first responders. You know what? You're right. We should definitely talk to Phil. Why are we talking to you? <laughs> yeah, let's, talk, let's get Phil on the show. Dan, I got to change gears to another topic. By the way, Phil, uh, Bob, I really, really apologize for all of the bleeps. <laughs> I know. I'm going to have a lot of fun bleeping the show. Let me ask you this, Dan. Uh, one of the most horrified instances I can remember from your truthradioshow.com is when you said that people should get into vans and fill them with C4 and drive them through abortion clinics. Why do you support terrorism, Dan? Oh, no, and I said, what else I say after that? As long as nobody's in the building. And it yes, doesn't matter if anybody's in the building. You understand how that's still terrorism, It doesn't right? matter. These people, places are evil. They kill them. Oh, but it's okay for them to kill babies, all right? It's okay for them to kill millions of babies a year. support terrorism. So I'm just getting, I'm just making... You so, just no, you're trying to justify the means here, okay? It's okay for them to kill countless numbers of babies for the satanic uh, bloodlust. That's legal and terrorism. Did you say oh, it's satanic. Satanic bloodlust. That's all it is. Margaret Sanger was an uh, occultist. Uh, okay. Margaret so Sanger, she was a admitted occultist. I love She's. That, I love that band. Yeah. By the way, I love. <laughs> Let me ask you this, Dan. I just want to be perfectly clear about this. You support terrorist attacks inside the United States using vans and C4. It's not a I terrorist attack. It's defending our children. No, it's not. It's, no, it's, let's it's, let's it's, let's, it's, let's it's, look at the definition of terrorism. Terrorism is to cause terrorism to terrify people. Okay. Yeah, and you, you don't think that's going to terrify people driving? Bank oh no, but it's okay to, to kill babies, all right? It's yeah. okay. It's okay for a girl to spread her legs and they to put the meat grinder to the child. Oh, that's okay though. It's like carcass lyrics. I love this. Oh yeah, that's it's okay because we've gone into another level of uh, Dante's hell right now. Okay, so but. <laughs> And yes, I do support it. If somebody wants to burn every one of those damn Planned Parenthoods down, as long as there's nobody in the building, like I stated the first time I said it. Same thing with the UN building, too. Blow the damn thing up as long as people is not in it. Dan, 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 if the planes had flown into the World Trade Centers and there had been no one in there, and I know you don't believe they actually did, but let's just say for you know, argument's sake, that if, if the planes flew into the World Trade Center and there had been nobody in those buildings at the time, would that still be terrorism? Absolutely. Okay, then what's the difference? It's a big difference because these uh, Planned Parenthood places kill innocent children. So, so you're saying okay, it's, if it's retribution. You don't think that those terrorists were trying to get back at the United States for some sort of egregious wrong? No, it's no terror. It's all hype. Okay, it's the CIA. Okay, they scare people to think, oh, it's a, we gotta watch out for terrorism. We gotta give up our civil liberties so they can stick their hands down our pants but, and to protect us. It is the point. You, you understand the point I'm trying to make, though? No, you I don't understand the point. Say that it doesn't matter whether people are in a, in a building or whether people I said it mattered. I said as long as nobody's in the building, there's nobody in the building. Blow the matter, damn thing up. Terrorism. It's still terrorism. No, it's not, because you're saving the lives of mi millions of innocent children. Okay, so what if, what if, the, what if what was the business that was happening in the World Trade Center was a defense contract, contractor making white phosphorus? 
and, and they're, they're killing people in, in war zones overseas. So would, you, would that be okay? As long as nobody died from it. So, so you'd be okay with the... With if the, it's like, justified. Well, it, oh, hold on, hold on. That's like saying uh, our military bombing strategic targets, the enemy. That's no, you're, you're trying to compare apples to oranges, yeah. Never in my wildest dreams did I think that on this program I could get Dan Badani to basically admit that what the Al Qaeda did on 9/11 was okay. Al Qaeda didn't do that. That was the federal government. Al Qaeda is a boogeyman. On record, Timothy Osman, that's uh, Bin Laden. Okay, he had nothing to do with 9/11. That even um, the vice president said that. That was on record. Okay, he had nothing to do with 9/11. Do you know, is there anything that you see on the news that you believe, or no, not on the news, is there anything that you run into from day-to-day -day life that you believe, that you go, you know what, that's that's not a false flag? Oh, absolutely, that's when somebody, somebody, sure, to put something over sure, me, when somebody, could, government trying to screw with sure, me. that's, you know, when somebody answers the question, then when, let me ask you this, how come six of the 10 9-11 official committee members do not buy the official story no more? Answer that Guess one. What? Why was Mid Way Mayor Willie Brown told not to fly that day from San Francisco? That was San Francisco Chronicle. Oh, my God. No, why, why was the mayor told not to fly that day? Don't ask any questions, just state facts. Oh, yeah, like um, uh, mainstream media zombie. Oh, yeah, well, we got to follow everything that we're told by the media and the government. And the so you believe in everything in the official narrative. Is that what you're going at? Never, never said that. I spent a long time in media, and I questioned everything. That's what you do. You're skeptical. exactly. That's what I'm but doing. When you get, but when you get a legitimate answer, then guess what? You go, okay, that's exactly. Good. You're right. But I haven't got a legitimate. I got ignored. <laughs> no, you don't. You have questions. You exactly. Have, Wait. You have, how did this happen? I don't know where. All right. Why do people, yeah. this? Why do people oh, man. think that? That's what I keep coming back to because that's the thing that makes you kind of a buffoon. Oh, for asking questions. Oh, yeah. That's a uh, problem. No, not for asking questions. It's totally okay to ask questions, but you don't accept the answers. If they didn't give no answers. Mean. There is no answers. If they gave me an answer, hell, all right, move on. But if nobody gives you the answer... But you wouldn't, because you're waiting for the answer that you believe is true, even if that answer is absolute crap. I mean, I guess my point here, Dan, is that why should anyone give you any answers? For God's sake, you're, you're supporting terrorism. Oh, yeah, I'm supporting the uh, Second Amendment. That's terrorism, yeah. Oh, yeah, you're right. No, 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 you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. According to the federal government, we're terrorists because we support the Second Amendment. We believe in the Constitution. That's on the Mayak Report, the Homeland Security's documents. Yeah. No, I'm not talking about yeah. that. I'm talking about the abortion clinics, Dan, which you said it's okay to bomb them. Oh, but it's okay for them to kill millions of kids a year? That's okay. Abortion? Hold on, you've got a vibrator going on. You've got a vibrator. We'll get your it's a motorcycle. That brings us back full circle. Is Common Core there? Oh, yeah, the Common Core dildo, yeah. Dan, explain to me... Uh, Unbelievable. Uh, yeah, let's get back to the facts, guys, okay? No, 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 here's, here's what I want to do. Because, you know what, half of your appearance on this show is just you going, ah, 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 because you keep interrupting us and Skype cuts you out. Okay, so let me, let me ask you one question. This is a very important question. Remember when the Pope released those doves and they were attacked by a crow and a seagull? C can you explain, can you walk us through that one again? No, just go watch the report. I mean, I'm not getting sidetracked here. Um, we're here to debate the facts, and you know, you're not you're not presenting no refutable evidence at all. Yeah, but a I'm lot of presenting. Oh, a lot of first of all, a lot of what you believe though stems from this sort of morality that you believe you have because you are a hardcore Christian. Is that correct? Well, yeah, the Bible is the base of morality. It's the base of the laws of the land. That's historical. Now, see, I don't. Now, see, I disagree with that as somebody who's an atheist. But that, you know, I don't think that I'm any less a decent person because of that. No, I didn't say he was. This country was I'm founded sorry. on Judeo-Christian. Yeah, this country was founded on Judeo-Christian beliefs, regardless mm -hmm. what you think. Mm -hmm. No, the first 120 but, but colleges in America, the now. country were founded on judicial, uh, uh, Christian Judeo beliefs. Christian Judeo beliefs. Okay. And here's under the Articles of Confederation, they even passed the old Deluder Satan Act to teach kids how to read and write. This was back in the 1600s, so they would not read and write the Bible, so they would not be deceived by the, the Dark Ages. This is all on record. Before, before we wrap up, you believe in Satan? Absolutely. You, say, you believe you, Satan? You, stop. You believe Satan is an actual being, an actual person, something that makes uh, us do bad. Uh, like a horn. No, not a horn, like uh, cartoon fictitious, but yes, he's a real being. Right. You think that you believe that there's a hell, there's a place where you go that uh, flakes of fire and chains of ice and stuff? Absolutely. Okay. All right. 
And that's exactly where people like Margaret Sanger are going, people who support abortion, these scum from Planned Parenthood, that's exactly where they're going from, the people from the United Nations are going from, these jerks, okay, they're trying to take out guns because registration leads to confiscation, and they're exactly in their plans, the globalist plans, the UN plans, the government plans, they want to confiscate our weapons, the UN openly stated they want total disarmament of the American people. The United Nations has said that on record. If you don't believe me, go to the UN's website and look up the documents for yourself. This is all okay. on record. Dan, we're running out of time. I got one last question for you. What do you think of the Iran deal? I just, uh, it's, it's all a giant hoax. That's all it is. I mean, it's just a bunch of hogwash. It's just the United States and uh, the UN should not do nothing. You know, I want to tell these people out there, these wars in the Middle East has nothing to do with our security, nothing to do with freedom, okay? It's all to do with global dominance. That's all it is, divide and conquer. Everything our founding fathers warned us not to do. What about uh, what about Israel's role in all this? Where do you land on that? Well, first of all, I don't I don't trust the Israeli government. I don't like the well, people. That, yes, but it, uh, which which member of the government don't you trust? None of them. Wait, specifically. None of them. I don't trust the entire Israeli government. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Right, thanks, thanks, thanks for being there, Kevin. Kevin's tracking with us. Okay. <laughs> Kevin knows exactly where we're going. I know where you're going with this, but I don't trust any of the Israeli government. Yeah, they're much as criminals as our government. But you know, don't trust the prime minister either. None of them. All right. What is it about the prime minister you don't like? None of them. I don't trust any of these people. Okay, they're all globalists. Trust specifically, what is it? Because I know you spent a lot of time on the prime minister of Israel. I mean, what, do, what don't you like about? <laughs> I don't trust any of them. <laughs> Kevin. <laughs> I like Kevin. <laughs> I like you guys. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. He's got. I mean, I know you try to go with this, but you know what? Right. We don't trust any of these governments right, because they all the work, they all collaborate on a global level, okay? And it's for a new world it. order, okay? Yeah. They want a new world order, and they're doing everything in their power to do this, okay? They want to push gun control, and exactly all over the country, you people say, oh, they're not taking our guns. Bull crap. We're talking about Israel. I just want to... No, I'm not talking about all the globalists, okay? I'm talking about uh, United States government, the Israeli government, the Iranian government. They're all on the same page. It's a giant Hollywood stage to push a global government. That's all it is. It's a giant Hollywood stage to... Push a global government, a new world order. As they openly state all the time. All the leaders call for a new world order. You know, but with conspiracy theorists. Oh, they don't say that when it's on record. They go on uh, the mainstream media and say, oh, we need a new world order. And you had this uh, scumbag of a pope. He's nothing but a false prophet going around preaching that climate change and yeah. global warming's fake. Climate change is fake. It's not real. Bring up the music. Yeah, uh, we've got the music running. We've got, we got, uh, we got about two minutes left to go in the show. And I just, I, it's all yours. It's all yours. Take it. I just, uh, yeah, I, I just want to get from you, Dan, because I know you, you talked about it a lot. There are real Jews in Israel, and according well, to... Well, it's right in Revelations. It says there's real there's Jews there's and uh, people who like, profess to be Jews, like the Israeli government and people like Rothschild, they fake, they're not, they're not real Jews, they're fake. And okay. the Bible says that right in Revelations, you can go look it up for yourself. So tell me about why the Prime Minister of Israel is not a real Jew. They all belong to the same group, well, from no. the same bloodline, from the same families and whatnot. Okay, so, but... What I'm trying to get at here, Dan, is why is the Prime Minister of Israel not a real Jew? They all belong to the same family and bloodline. Okay, so, but what does that have to do with the Prime Minister? Oh, it has a lot to do with it. And it's called global government. They're all trying to push our government as well. They're all in together, United Nations. They want a global government. They want to take your guns. They're going to force everybody for RFID chip. This is all on record, folks. You can research all this for yourself. Don't listen to me, Baba Chez. Do your own research. That's all well, I have to say. To us. I mean, we want people to listen to us. I mean, I want... No, why don't you let your audience have a mind for their own? I tell my audience, don't listen to Dan Badandi. I want you to have a mind for your own out there listening and research all the stuff for yourself. I guess what we're getting at, Dan, do you know the name of the Prime Minister of Israel? Nope, um, no, I can't recall it. Benjamin Netanyahu. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, Kevin. Good man, Kevin. Dan, do you know, do you know the name of the Prime Minister of Israel? Um, Adolf Hitler. That's nice. Well, Wolsey, I like it. Yeah, He's very I, close. I, 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 Resemblance very well. close, but... Dan, thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, have a good day. Remember, good the good Second Amendment shall not be infringed. Okay, sure. All right. All right. One, more time. One, more time, one more time, Dan. The Second Amendment shall not be infringed. Okay, bye-bye.
Well, there you have it, folks. That was the Bob and Chez, the Bubble Genius Show. And uh, you notice how they're trying to sidetrack me to say the Prime Minister's name. I can't say it to save my life. I can't. But I admit it. Okay, I'm not a perfect speaker. Netanyahu or whatever. I don't, it doesn't even matter, okay? The thing is, they say, oh, you have a right to ask questions, but you don't have a right to ask questions. I mean, did you not hear what they were saying? It's okay to ask questions, but not ask questions. If I got answers, okay, at the Boston Marathon, if they were to turn around and tell me, hey, here's the, here's why you're wrong, that would have been end, end of it. Plain and simple, it would have been over. Same thing with Wolfgang when he asked those questions about Sandy Hook. That would have been the end of it. But when you ignore the questions, when you ignore the questions, okay, that shows guilt, plain and simple. But I can only imagine what kind of uh, audio clips are going to come out of this, uh, what kind of articles they're going to print up. But I'm glad I recorded on this end because I don't know what they're going to try to do or they did on the live on the air. doesn't matter anyway because we know these people, you know, Bob and Chez, they're a bunch of brain-dead liberals, okay, that believe in everything the official story reports everything the official narrative that's the way it is that's it we're not we don't have a right to challenge it and yes it is on record about the boston globe tweet it wasn't debunked that was on the boston globe's twitter plain and simple and um the same thing with the local 15 article talking about uh coaches on the sideline on the finish line i'm sorry reporting that there was just a drill they heard announcements made all that was on record. The police even admitted they did bomb drills. And it happened to be coincidentally, though, in the same two locations. I mean, I could go on all night with these facts and the gun facts. But they're trying to justify the means and all the other stuff. It's just, that's what they do. They use circular, circular reasoning over and over again. So they could try to make themselves sound intelligible. But when it comes down to it, they didn't answer or refute any of my answers. Then. Uh, questions, I should say. And um, yeah, I'm just, uh huh. Yeah, I'm just baffled that these people, uh, if people actually listen to these guys. You know, they base the show on just trashing people because they mis mispronounce a word or what, what have you. But anyway, we're out of time. This is Dan Badanti for truthradioshow.com.